Hi there, uh, welcome to another tutorial. Uh, today we're going to have a look at a plugin for Premiere Pro called Film Convert. Um, so, just starting off, telling you this is the Film Convert website, and uh, in, a, in a nutshell, what it does is give digital camera footage the color and grain of your favorite film stocks. Um, so, what it does is it allows digital footage um, to look more filmic, and this is sort of the one thing that a lot of people that shoot on digital uh, these days, um, which is probably most of us, because uh, film is very expensive and sort of um, only for, for very serious cinematographers that have, have got big budgets, etc., um, is that we want our digital footage to look more kind of filmic and more Hollywood and more authentic. So uh, these guys at Film Convert have come up with a plugin that aims to do that. And the way it does it is it emulates um, film stocks. It looks at your existing footage depending on what camera you shot it on with what type of uh, picture profile. And it looks at the difference between what you would have shot it on and what the um, film stock would look like. And then it tries to make those um, those differences up. So you could do this with normal color grading. So you can put curves on, changing the hue, saturation, etc. But it's going to take a very long time. And, and what Film Convert have done have, have effectively sort of created a shortcut for doing all that um, and allow you to do it with a few simple presses uh, of the mouse. So we've got a clip here in Premiere Pro and this is from a film that I shot in a place called Bodie in California. It's, a, it's probably the most famous ghost town, a uh, completely deserted place, very desolate. It's about 8,000 feet above sea level, somewhere in the uh, uh, Sierra Nevada uh, area of California and a uh, really creepy place. Um, so I was there and I decided to shoot um, just a short piece um, it was a bit of a hack storyline, but uh, it was more to capture the, the feeling and the look of the place. Now, this was shot on a Canon 5D Mark III, and it was shot with a uh, Marvel picture style, uh, picture profile even. So, reasonably flat, and this was the look, as you can see here, straight out of camera. Um, doesn't look too bad. It's a, it's a long shot, shot with um, telephoto lens. Um, if we just play it and see you've got some heat haze on there and sort of compressed detail uh, and it's just a woman walking up a dirt track now what sort of struck me about this place was that all this really nice oranges and yellows in the, the bush and the scrub and this real bleached wood look on all the buildings um it was you know uh, you can see it a little bit here on this this sort of a uh, small wood box um the really sort of bleached uh, effect that the the sun and the weathering had given the wood and i really wanted to bring this out in uh the footage so what i've done is so this was the original and here we've got a graded clip and here you can see much more orange there's a lot more contrast in there so we've got these real dark areas um the woman now stands out or the lone figure stands out a lot more on the, the light colored track and this was all done through film convert so we're gonna have a quick look at the plugin uh, it's literally just an effect that will sit in your effects panel and I've got two versions here. I've got Film Convert Pro and Film Convert Pro 2, which is the newer version and we'll come on to Pro 2 in just a minute, but we'll have a look at the, the original one first because there's probably still a lot of people out there using it. So if we work from the top to the bottom, um, and what Film Convert does is it allows you to pick your source camera and there's loads and loads of here, all the, the really popular ones, so you kind of Canon DSLRs, um, uh, GH2s, GH3s, I believe, um, Blackmagic camera. And you can download profiles for your particular cameras and all the associated picture profiles. So I've got Canon 5D Mark III, and as you'll see, there's one for flat, marble, Prolos, Technicolor, Vision Color, all the different uh, picture profiles that you can install from uh, different manufacturers, etc. So... Uh, we've just got uh, a Pro Lost uh, set here. Um, now, just because you shoot uh, in a particular picture style doesn't mean you necessarily have to choose it. It does help, um, but sometimes I find that if the effect's a little bit too harsh, um, Marvel being a very flat pitch of profile, Prolos being a little, um, having a little bit more kind of contrast in it. So I've selected Prolos for this. Um, now, what you have here is control over your exposure. So once again, say you kind of blown out your highlights or it was an overexposed shot, you can drop your exposure down. And I think I have done here. So if we go back, zero is the default. Um, 
I'm actually looking at the wrong clip. Um, let's just go back to that. So let's just put it at zero. And you see there, it's um, gone up a little bit in exposure. It's a bit bright there. So I wanted to drop it down. So I'm going to just drop it down. And there you go. Um, slightly more pleasing. The color temperature is another setting that you've got control over. And here I was going for that real orangey feel. So I've boosted the, the temperature up quite high um, to 7,000. I think the default is probably 5,600, which is around sort of daylight balance. If we go to that, it doesn't look too bad, but I wanted that, that warmer feel. So we've gone to 7,000 here. Now this probably is other than setting your um what your source camera was probably the most important one and i'd probably if uh, maybe have it above the exposure and the temperature so this is the type of film stock now i'm not a guy that's ever shot film um i'm probably not going to i wouldn't imagine so i don't really know too much about film stocks um but you literally just pick the one you want and see what looks good for you so some you'll find are um a lot more kind of contrasty so very crushed blacks um some are a little flatter and i think for in this case i've set it uh set on uh this particular one here um that was the one that gave me the look that i was going for so if we scroll down through the other options uh, the size here now this is talking about the grain and a aesthetic of uh, film stock is the grain that's associated with it um it, it's kind of funny that with digital cameras we get noise and it's something that's we're always trying to get rid of um either shooting with as minimum noise as possible or removing it in post um whereas film has that natural sort of grainy feel to it um gives it that that real organic sort of feel and this plugin actually allows you to simulate grain it can be quite good for actually hiding noise so you can put grain over noise and it's going to get rid of it a little bit um, the 35mm full frame uh, is the smallest or the finest type of grain and 8mm is the coarsest or largest type of grain. So if I go to 8mm, I um, can't really see it in this um, uh, preview. If we go like this um, and we play, there you go. You can see how grainy uh, it's just going to start rendering now that is. So... I mean, the Canon uh, 5D Mark III is a full-frame sensor, um, full-frame uh, grain. You'll see that I've got the grain set down to 20%, so I've taken out a lot of the grain. Now, if we go back to the 8 man, if I put this up to, say, 100, well, there you go. You see the size of the grain there appear now. Um, and if we go somewhere in the middle, like Super 16, there we go, a bit finer, and then all the way to 35, and even finer still. So you've got control over the amount of grain. I typically find, unless you're going for, um, you know, particularly stylized look, 100% is a little bit too high for me. So I like to drop it down. And I think for in this instance, I had about 20%, probably around 40 or 50 is okay. Um, but it's, it's a personal preference sort of thing. So there's no right or wrong answer. It's just experimenting with what you think looks good. Okay, and then we have the film color um, setting which is how much of the effect is applied. So we can toggle it from 100 down to 0%. And if the, if the effect is, is a little bit too uh, intense, we can sort of drop it down. And that's just going to take some of the color out of it. Um, it's reasonably subtle, but it's, I mean, you can see there, um, if we drop it from 100 back down, we're just, we're just taking the edge off slightly. It's not something that generally I'll ever use I always leave it at the default 100% um, it's I'm going to be changing the the film stock um, etc and getting my the rest of my settings uh, rather than uh, playing with the film color too much but if you do want to just take the edge off a little bit um, you can drop it down Okay, so hopefully that's given you a fairly good overview of the Film Convert plugin. Now, I did mention that there is now a um, version 2, which has even more controls built in. And what they've done is they've taken some of the controls from the standalone version and incorporated into the plugin, which is a great help because it allows you to do even more uh, grading and color correction within the plugin without having to do other things. 
So if we go and have a look at this clip here, and we have got Film Convert Pro 2 uh, applied to this. Now, the top settings are all exactly the same, so I won't go over those again because uh, I've already explained those. But where it starts to get different is we've got additional controls. The first one of these being Curve. And this is a bit like your S curves that you could apply uh, in RGB curves. It's uh, the the curve is the the highlights are are sort of bumped up and the shadows are, are pulled down. So you've got that uh, higher um, contrast. So your 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 highlights are, are bright and your darks are really dark, so really crushed. So if that's too extreme and you're you're losing detail, say from your shadows. Um, we can pull that down and you start to flatten your image out a little bit. So you're removing some of the contrast. And we see there, you can see the highlights across here and we've got some shadows here and, and, and in the buildings. But as we start to shift that down, the detail in the shadow come back a little bit and we lose some of those highlights. So that's the, the first control. And it's actually really useful because sometimes when you put these film stocks in, um, you do lose that detail in your shadows um, because film obviously responds in a different way um, different dynamic ranges than, than digital um, digital footage so that's a really useful one i find myself using that a lot uh, grain is the same as before and now you'll see that we've got some color correction built in here so once again it's it's just making your grading and color correction that much easier because you can do it in all in one place without having to throw RGB curves or levels or anything like that onto it. We can do it all within Film Convert. So we've got our color wheels and they you, you've got two ways of controlling these. You can do it with the wheels or we do have values here. Now uh, the sliders down the bottom control the exposure. So if we wanted to pull down our highlights, uh, we can do it here. Okay, and you see there, it's obviously at the extreme end. Uh, similar if we want to increase them. So let's bump up the highlights and let's pull down the shadow. So we get a real contrast, the image, ooh, a bit too much there. Um, something like that. Um, now, if I want to reset it, you've got a little X at the top. Um, you click on that and that's going to put it back to its default values. Color wheels work the same so if we want to give a particular hue to our shadows we can do that so say we wanted to cool down our shadows we pull that towards the blue and so we wanted to warm up our highlights uh, the old uh, orangey highlights um, we can do that so it's just giving you that that control over the wheels uh, like I say you have the values here so here are the shadows and it's going to tell you um, what you've done to it. It's going to represent it there. Um, uh, sorry, we're talking about the shadows here. Um, and you'll see if I reset the shadows, it resets the values. Midtones highlights work exactly the same way. So nice little color correction um, tools within there. We've got our levels as well. So once again, if we want to move our black point, our white point, or our sort of mid gray point, we can do that. Uh, just by shifting along and you'll obviously see as we move our black point higher uh, the footage is going to get darker to compensate for that adjusted black point so nice little additions there um, to film convert with the the color wheels the the curves control and the levels as well now the last thing is the render option and this is really cool um, one sort of problem I had with Film Convert, well, not so much a problem, but one of the uh, disadvantages is when you apply this to all your footage, and if you've got loads and loads of clips that you're doing individually over a sort of long sequence, it takes a long time to render. They've added an option now to render on your GPU using OpenCL. Now, if we just have a look, so we've applied um, some changes here, and if we see how long this is going to render, so we just change it. So it's just going to render this clip. And if I kick off a render on the CPU, um, let's see. So, okay, it's going to take about a minute, 45 seconds to do this, this one clip. Um, 
on the CPU. Now, that's not the end of the world, but imagine you've got 50 or 60 of these. It's going to take quite a while. Um, so let's just go ahead and cancel that. Now, I'm working on a decent machine. It's an uh, eight-core processor, 16 gig of RAM. So, uh, although the processor is, is basically the only thing that's using when it, it renders with the CPU. Set at four, four gigahertz, so reasonably decent multi-threaded processor. Let's go up and change this to GPU, and let's see how long this renders. Well, there you go. You can see instantly much, much quicker. Um, it's probably going to take about eight or nine seconds to do the whole clip. And there you go, it's finished, and we're playing through already. So really really good feature that um i don't know why it's set to cpu by default and not gpu um because you have to change that every time but do that and your renders are going to be so much quicker okay so hopefully that was useful and a little bit of introduction to film cover uh, how i particularly use it and uh, how to use the newer version um, great little tool. Have a play. Any questions, please do ask. But the, the real key is experiment with it. Uh, find out what works well with you and uh, enjoy.